Whenever I make videos about why I can't stand wash and goes or team natural styles, I get comments like, what would you say to the women with really long natural hair? What would you say to them? Because their hair is so long, I would say that most of them need a cone cut. And this is a cut that I used to do all the time. And the reason I call it a cone cut is because the breakage that most women who do different natural styles like wash and go and twist outs and top knot buns and just a bun period or doing anything when the hair is wet most of them have this same exact type of breakage and need a cone cut so in this video we're going to break it down because this is a client that really truly trusted me let's get into it Before we get started, make sure you go ahead and subscribe here to the channel. Did you hear me real quick? Subscribe to the channel and then click on the bell notification so you notify every time I post another video because I have thousands of videos like this that I can recycle to give you guys a visual representation of what I've been saying before we move on to the next topic. Now, the only thing that is present in her hair right now is a leave-in conditioner. At this time, I did have my own product line, so the ingredients were like exactly the same. And if I'm not, no, I'm I had a little bottle of my own product line left, but I had already ended it by then. So the product that I have been using since I graduated cosmetology school is Kimra. Kimra has an amazing lightweight leave-in conditioner. And as you can see, I was not spraying that long. You guys, most of the reasons that your silk presses don't turn out right, most of the reason why when you blow dry your hair, it reverts back right away is because you add two much product products are polymers make sure you check the link in the description box below so you can learn the details on what polymers actually are but in short a polymer is something that puts a coating on top of the hair shaft and all of the products that y'all put on your hair the oils the butters uh too much cream leave-in conditioner all of that all of those are polymers and it creates a layer on top of the hair shaft and water and oil do not mix. So when you spray all of that on the hair, your hair is never actually dry and the hydrogen bond is never set. Again, from my last video, the reason that I said I cannot stand wash and goes is because the way her hair looks right now, her curls are so luscious. They're so beautiful. You cannot see damage in sight, but that is why I I do not like wash and goes because naturally curly hair swells when it is wet and naturally um, straight hair swells when it is dry. Okay, and you're only supposed to cut hair when it is stretched. Naturally, straight hair is stretched when it's wet and naturally curly hair is stretched when it is dry. This is why the whole curly cut saga was a nightmare for professional cosmetologists like myself. And so when we are doing all of our team natural styles and we see the bulk and we see the weight of our hair we become under the illusion that you know we have really really healthy hair just because our hair is long and it's something that I try to tell people all the time because I did this for well over a decade all right so I really need people to understand that my job was doing women with beautiful, thick, long, natural hair just like this. I started off this series with women who had what most people would view as like shorter hair because I want everybody to see themselves, right? All of my clients had different lengths, different densities. This texture is what everybody wants right but the reality is only a very small percentage of black women have hair this thick okay i tell you guys all the time that the average human being has a hundred thousand follicles on their scalp and each follicle has anywhere between one to four strands the average person has about two to three hairs per follicle a woman who has a density like hers 
has four strands per follicle for sure and i listen i think she may have 17 per follicle i'm just saying i remember round brushing her hair and i love the round brush because if you pay attention to how the bristles look on a round brush versus how the bristles look on a paddle brush it is a very very big difference the teeth are closer together and the object of a silk press like the objective the whole reason that you're doing it for the end result is to separate as many of those strands as possible again the average person has a hundred thousand follicles each follicle has one or four strands so the average person has anywhere between a hundred thousand and four hundred thousand hairs on their head so as a licensed cosmetologist who understands the science because not every cosmetologist understands the science a lot the majority majority of cosmetologists just got in it to get the money and aren't concerned about the science of hair but if you are a cosmetologist like myself who's concerned about the science of hair you're going to be like okay if my goal is to get as many of these 100,000 to 400,000 strands separated if that's my goal is it going to be easier for me to use something with smaller teeth or is it going to be something is it going to be smarter for me to use something with bigger teeth and it's a no brainer i'm going to get my work done faster if it has smaller teeth that are able to separate more hairs at one time so that is why i choose to use a round brush but I'm going to be honest and say that it took a while for me to learn how to do a round brush on myself. I had to perfect doing it on other people before I could perfect doing it on myself because the first couple of times I used it on my own head before I perfected it, I broke my hair off. So if you do not know what you're doing with a round brush, don't pick it up. I'm not trying to sound arrogant, but I don't really know too many. I, I know there are a lot of black women out there, but there aren't that many black women who can work around brush the way that I can. So it's something that I did master so I really recommend you guys to get like a mannequin and just practice on a mannequin that's what I did like practice on a mannequin and to that mannequin look like she got a silk press and then when you can emulate that multiple times then you can turn around and do that but I want you to pay attention to how the only product that has been added to her hair is leave-in conditioner by Kimra. I didn't go in and spray all of these different products. And then another really big mistake you guys make whenever you're a round brusher, you're a round brusher. Whenever you're going to blow dry your hair for a silk press, you guys spray thermal heat protectant on your hair. No, a leave-in conditioner is the thermal heat protectant for the blow dryer. That's what the word conditioning means the word conditioning means to prepare something like to prepare for so when you do a leave-in conditioner you're preparing your hair for the blow drying process and putting back the remaining of whatever the shampoo could have possibly taken but the shampoos unless you're using like a uh, vo5 or something really 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 harsh like tresemme you're not really it's not that deep okay but anyway, I went through and round brushed her hair and I need you guys to remember that I have this video sped up so I'm not moving hard on her hair or like most of my clients said it felt like a massage. They would like fall asleep and this woman was so amazing. Um, her and her daughter flew out from a whole nother state just to see me because this is what I did. Okay. I was the one who got everything done. If there was damage to the hair from Team Natural, if they wanted to get a, a cone cut, then they booked your girl, okay? The women who were ready to live in reality because I would tell them like, okay, I'm gonna get your hair straight, but after we get it straight, I'm gonna turn you around. We gonna look at it. We gonna see where that damage is. And I'm just letting you know, if you are not okay with getting rid of the damage and getting rid of that cone and getting this cone cut, then it's not gonna give you the same thing that you've been seeing on social media. It's not gonna give, okay? 
So, of course, she was ready. She was on board. You guys, let me know if you're still here. Let me know um, if you want to see her daughter's hair, how her daughter turned out. I'm going to have to look through all of my videos. Oh, my God. Like, mind you, I've made them all unlisted. So, oh, my God. It's just going to take so much for me to find it. But anyway, if you want to see her daughter's hair, let me know. So at this point, we are getting ready to straighten her hair. She did go up under the dryer for her roots to dry. But this is the leave-in conditioner that, I mean, the leave-in conditioner, the heat protectant that I have been using for years. Do you hear me? Years. And I still use it now. I'm going to have a video, an updated video of my hair. Oh, you're not ready. Coming really soon. But I still use both of these products on my hair, like right now to this day. So, yeah, um, as I am flat ironing her hair, I'm simply spraying a little bit of this thermal protectant on each piece. Right. And then I comb through her hair again, because remember, our main goal is to separate all of these hair strands. That is the goal. OK. So, again, as we're moving through, as you're um, giving somebody a silk press, the key is to have weightless hair. And the more product you add to the hair, the heavier the hair is going to be. So, if you're a person who's ever done a silk press and you expect it to be all flowy and stuff like the girls on YouTube and stuff like that, but then you put your hands through your hair and it's stiff, well, that is because, my love, you have added too much product to the hair you are not supposed to add that much product to the hair and this is another reason why I cannot stand wash and goes because it suffocates the hair shaft you think that you're doing something good to your hair because you're using polymers I'm telling y'all please go watch the live on polymers it's because you're using polymers so when you're using all of these polymers it's putting layers and layers and layers of product on top of the hair shaft making you think that your hair is healthy when it's not and then you use a really good clarifying shampoo like Olaplex 4c that's my favorite one the second favorite is Kimbra's clarifier it smells like grapefruit and you will you'll use a clarifying shampoo and be like I don't like that it stripped my hair it made my hair feel rough no it didn't it didn't make your hair feel rough what it did it took all of those layers of product off of your hair shaft that have been giving you the illusion of having hair that feels good giving you the illusion of hair that feels healthy and babe I'm not trying to be mean this is what I did for over a decade okay I would do 13 women a day just like this with the cone cut that's why I've been able to name it and they can't they would book me and say see I'm ready for this look get this little cone cut get this stuff off my head all right so this is the thing i'm just sharing with you guys if you still want to do your wash and go saying do it but if you're gonna leave a comment please don't ask me like oh Sam, what if i do a wash and go like this what if i do one like this do you agree with this wash and go method i do not agree with the wash and goes and twist outs and air drying your hair in any way shape or form i am against it in every way and it's okay you can find a channel or or you know an environment where they relate to you but in that sense no and there's nothing anyone can ever say to change my mind because I did this for over a decade all right so I know that I know that I know and that is why I push my seven day hair growth challenge so much because this is literally the regimen that every client that you're going to see in this series went home with. They all went home with the same exact routines and all of the information that I'm giving you in the seven day challenge. Right. And they got that because they were paying for their hair appointment. So it was like a part of their hair appointment. Like, listen, that's I wasn't cheap. OK. So, yeah, I really, really want you guys to get into it and look at her. Look at the shine in her hair. There has been no oil added to this woman's hair whatsoever. At this point, the only thing that is in her hair is a leave in conditioner and heat protectant spray. Now, uh, there's another toss up. Oh, is heat protectant spray needed? Yes. Heat protection spray is needed because 
it is a polymer, but it is the right type of polymer. It is a polymer that puts a protective coating on top of the hair shaft that makes the heat reflect off. So that way it's not like penetrating and saturating. It's just adding enough heat just to reset the bond temporarily until your hair is wet again. But it is needed because if you don't use it, there's nothing between your your hair and the flat iron. There's nothing to bounce that heat off of. But if I really don't like oil based heat protectants, because when you anytime you add oil to a flat iron, it's going to sizzle. It's like cooking bacon. So I don't really like that because it. The, the oil is not reflecting it as much it's just I don't know it just feels like you're frying chicken but I mean that's just my professional opinion that was my preference right but there are a lot of other professionals that have different preferences and that's that's the art right that's the part of hair care that's different there are certain scientific facts that remain the same but everybody's techniques are different and that's okay but that's just mine right the using an oil based heat protectant or uh you know an alcohol based heat protectant is is up to your own personal preference depending on what you're doing right so yeah as you can see this took me a while okay this video is like sped up times 20 but it took me um a nice little minute guys and at this point you can see again that the shine in her hair is like freaking impeccable okay the shine is impeccable and there is no extra product added i also want you to notice how i'm taking really really thin pieces i'm not taking like big chunks the key is to get the hair each hair strand as separate as possible right that's why we do what people have called the chase method i never called it the chase method in school we just learned how to do it that way right uh, we didn't have a name for it. And so as we followed the, um, the the flat iron down with the comb, then what it did, it separates the hair the same way that a pressing comb works. But it's just like having a, a manual pressing comb, if you will. Right. It's emulating a pressing comb, giving the hair the illusion of the comb being hot. But the flat iron is the one that's hot separating as it moves down the hair shaft. Right. So now in this case, just like I told you earlier, naturally straight hair is stretched when wet and naturally curly hair is stretched when it is dry and like the bonds are all the way stretched out. Now you can see. So there's a difference, right? There's a difference. So it don't look too bad on that black cape. You can't see it's like, oh, yeah, the ends just look a little frazzled. No, baby. No, we would always switch to a white cape or a gray cape or put a towel down. And now you can see where the cone is. So as we hop back into this, you can see what I mean. This is why I called it a cone cut, because when you put your hair in a ponytail, right? Picture this. The way that it looks, you are grabbing your hair. And then if you're doing team natural styles where either your hair was dried in a diffuser or it's been air dried or you just wet it and put it in a ponytail or you put, have your hair in twists all the time and those twists are in a ponytail. The more you twist your hair, the more you cause breakage. And when you think about it, when you put your hair in a ponytail, it's coming up on the sides and in the back, which creates a cone shape breakage a cone shape formation on the hair shaft towards the ends right and you cannot see that when your hair is curly you cannot see it when your ends are curly and you also cannot see all of these frayed ends because she also had a slight hair shaft disorder one that we talked about before if you want me to dive more into hair shaft disorders leave it in the comments below but putting all of those products on your hair it suffocates the hair shaft it suffocates it, it suffocates the cuticle and it ends up causing breakage and you think that it's slip no it's not slip 
okay you guys are breaking your hair you're weighing it down it's too heavy like polymers are not supposed to be layered and packed on top of the hair shaft oil is a polymer gel is a polymer creams are polymers like you can even see right there that open space I actually didn't cut as much hair and get rid of as much breakage if you look right there that open spot there's actually a couple of other shorter pieces underneath from her always having her hair like in a bun that was wet or a bun that had a lot of products on it and notice how most of her length is towards the front because the hair is always pulled back and up in a ponytail so the hair that is in the back the hair that is longest is the hair that is the most damaged the hair that is the longest is the hair that you put the most product on right a lot of people like to argue that um curly hair should be detangled wet you are wrong you guys when you detangle your hair wet you break your ends and when you watch videos of women detangling their hair there'll be so much hair in the comb well guess what the hair that is breaking off is the hair that broke off to cause and create this cone shape of breakage that most women have right so at this point now I'm just going to go through her hair and create long layers not short layers but long layers to get rid of as much of the damage as I can without taking away that much length so when I say that I do cut hair a little different than other people is because my haircuts were not just standard haircuts the haircuts that I provided for my clients were haircuts to get rid of their damage and to cure their hair shaft disorders all right that was the thing I wasn't just doing hair just to do it which is another reason why I decided to leave because even though the I had a really really good number of clients like her like I said she drove she flew out from a all another side i'm in vegas and if i'm not mistaken she's she's either from maryland or chicago i could be so wrong i'm sorry if you're watching this i'm sorry but um her and her daughter flew out to see me so yeah she was like saying do whatever you need to do so even though i don't know to some people it may look like i cut a lot of her hair off she would have lost so much hair if we would not have gotten rid of it because where that cone was it would have just kept splitting up the hair shaft and what most naturals do not understand is once it splits up the hair shaft and it has nowhere else to go it's going to split within the cuticle and this is where most black women are getting all of these different forms of alopecia from now the final product that I'm going to use is a serum so I just use like maybe like a dime size amount of a serum in my head in my head in my hand um emulsify it on my hands and then i'll go ahead and wrap her hair now the reason that i'm doing this is to finally like put the final setting on the hydrogen bond so her cuticle sets all the way remember you close the cuticle with cold water or air so they go under the dryer on cool air to close the cuticle finally and when you put the serum on there when you're closing the cuticle it puts like a beautiful sleek look on it so that is the scientific breakdown of what a silk press is and when i say that i cannot stand twist outs and i cannot stand wash and goes in any way shape or form this is what i mean and understand she was not wearing her hair straight all the time she had a regiment right but just because your hair is naturally curly does not mean that you are in the bondage of only wearing your hair curly because guess what when you only wear your hair curly and you never stretch it out to see your hair in all of its sovereignty and all of its divinity you end up with a whole lot of damage and different forms of alopecia or you end up coming to see me and getting most of the hair will not come to see me because I retired but somebody like me to get most of the hair that you've grown out cut off so don't do that let's just follow the science from jump all right make sure you subscribe so you can catch the next video and comment below so we can talk in the comments I love you guys bye